In this video, you will learn how to solve quadratic equations using the completing the square method. We will work through different examples, starting with equations with a leading coefficient of 1, and then those with a leading coefficient different from 1. Let's get started. If a quadratic equation is given in standard form with a leading coefficient of 1, our first step is to move the constant term to the right side of the equation. In this example, we can do this by subtracting 21 from both sides of the equation. Next, we find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Half of 10 is 5, and 5 squared is 25, right? Then, we add this value to both sides of the equation. This addition transforms the expression on the left side into a perfect square trinomial. Our next step is to rewrite this trinomial as a binomial square, which will be x plus 5 squared. The number in the binomial always corresponds to half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial, which is 5 in this case. Notice that by adding a specific number, we complete the square. This is why the method is named completing the square. On the right side, negative 21 plus 25 equals 4. Next, we take the square root of both sides. According to the square root property, if x squared equals a real number k, then x equals plus or minus the square root of k. So, we have x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2, right? Finally, we solve for x by subtracting 5 from both sides. These cancel out, and we get x equals negative 5 plus or minus 2. This is the same as x equals negative 5 plus 2, or x equals negative 5 minus 2. Therefore, the solutions are x equals negative 3 or x equals negative 7. We can check our solutions by substituting them back into the original equation. Substituting negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, and 10 times negative 3 is negative 30. 9 minus 30 is negative 21, and this equals 0, right? Similarly, substituting negative 7, negative 7 squared is 49 and 10 times negative 7 is negative 70. 49 minus 70 is negative 21, and this equals 0. As you can see, both negative 3 and negative 7 are valid solutions. Let's discuss why in some cases we need to use the completing the square method instead of the factoring method. This quadratic equation can be easily solved by factoring, as it is simple to find two numbers that multiply to give 21 and add up to 10. These numbers are 3 and 7, right? 3 multiplied by 7 equals 21, and 3 plus 7 equals 10. So, when we factor this quadratic equation, it becomes x plus 3 times x plus 7, which equals 0. Now, setting each factor equal to 0 and solving for x gives us the solutions. As you can see, the factoring method is easier and faster for this example, right? However, not every quadratic trinomial can be factored, but all can be solved by completing the square. For instance, in the next example, it is difficult to find two numbers that multiply to give negative 3 and add up to 6. Can you find these numbers? It is difficult, right? So this quadratic equation is challenging to factor. However, it can be easily solved using the completing the square method. Since this quadratic equation is also in standard form, with a leading coefficient of 1, our first step is to move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared equals 9. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. This addition transforms the expression on the left side into a perfect square trinomial. Our next step is to rewrite this trinomial as a binomial square, which will be x plus 3 squared. Remember, the number in the binomial always corresponds to half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, 3 plus 9 equals 12. Next, take the square root of both sides. The square root of 12 simplifies to 2 times the square root of 3, right? So, we have x plus 3 equals plus or minus 2 root 3. Finally, solve for x by subtracting 3 from both sides. This gives us x equals negative 3 plus 
or minus 2 root 3. You can leave your solution as it is, or write the two solutions separately. Both are possible ways of writing the solutions. Let's work on more examples that are difficult to solve with factoring, but possible with the completing the square method. By the way, you can solve any quadratic trinomial using the completing the square method. First, move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Since negative 7 does not divide evenly by 2, we leave it as a fraction. Negative 7 squared is 49, and 2 squared is 4. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. Now, write this perfect square trinomial as a binomial square. This number is half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, add negative 11 and 49 over 4. Negative 11 is the same as negative 11 over 1, right? To get a common denominator, multiply it by 4 over 4. Negative 11 times 4 is negative 44, and 1 times 4 is 4. Now, add the numerators, which equals 5. The next step is to take the square root of both sides. The square root of 5 over 4 simplifies to the square root of 5 over 2. Finally, solve for x by adding 7 halves to both sides of the equation. You can leave your solution as it is, or write the two solutions separately. In fact, because the denominators are the same, you can combine the numerators. All of these are acceptable ways of writing the solutions. This one is for you. Please pause the video and give it a try. First, move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Negative 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. Now, write this perfect square trinomial as a binomial square. This number is half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, add the fractions. Since they have a common denominator, simply add the numerators. Next, take the square root of both sides. The square root of 4 is 2. Then solve for x by adding 1 half to both sides of the equation. This is the same as x equals 1 half plus 2, or x equals 1 half minus 2. Therefore, the solutions are x equals 5 halves or negative 3 halves. Now, let's work on quadratic equations with a leading coefficient different from 1. To complete the square, the leading coefficient must be 1. So, when the leading coefficient is different from 1, our initial step is to make it 1. We do this by dividing each term in the equation by the leading coefficient itself. In this case, the leading coefficient is negative 1. So, we divide each term in the equation by negative 1. As you can see, the leading coefficient is now 1. From this point forward, we follow the same steps as in the previous examples. Move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Negative 9 squared is 81 and 2 squared is 4. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. Now, write this perfect square trinomial as a binomial square. Remember, the number in the binomial is half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, add negative 15 and 81 over 4. Negative 15 is the same as negative 15 over 1, right? To get a common denominator, multiply it by 4 over 4. Negative 15 times 4 is negative 60, and 1 times 4 is 4. Now add the numerators, which equals 21. Next, take the square root of both sides. The square root of 21 over 4 simplifies to the square root of 21 over 2. Finally, solve for x by adding 9 halves to both sides of the equation. You can leave your solution as it is, or write the two solutions separately, or combine the numerators since the denominators are the same. If you have found this video helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This one is for you. Please pause the video and give it a try. In this example, the leading coefficient is 3. So first, 
divide each term in the equation by 3 to make the leading coefficient 1. Then, move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Half of negative 16 is negative 8 and negative 8 squared equals 64. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. Now, write this perfect square trinomial as a binomial square. This number is half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, 11 plus 64 equals 75. Next, take the square root of both sides. The square root of 75 simplifies to 5 times the square root of 3. Then, solve for x by adding 8 to both sides of the equation. Therefore, these are the solutions. The next example is a bit more challenging. It involves many fractions in the process of solving, so please stay with me. The leading coefficient is 4. So first, divide each term in the equation by 4 to make the leading coefficient 1. Then, move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. 5 times 1 is 5, and 4 times 2 is 8. 5 squared is 25, and 8 squared is 64. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. Next, write this perfect square trinomial as a binomial square. This number is half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, add the fractions. To get a common denominator, multiply the first fraction by 16 over 16. 6 times 16 is 96, and 4 times 16 is 64. Now add the numerators, which equals 121. Next, take the square root of both sides. The square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of 64 is 8, right? Finally, solve for x by subtracting 5 eighths from both sides. One of the solutions is negative 5 eighths plus 11 eighths. Add the numerators since they have the same denominator. This simplifies to 3 fourths. The other solution is negative 5 eighths minus 11 eighths. This is equal to negative 2. Therefore, these are the solutions. In the next example, the quadratic equation is not in standard form. What should be our first step? In this case, the first step is to rewrite the quadratic equation in standard form. To do this, subtract 12x from both sides of the equation. Next, divide each term in the equation by 7 to make the leading coefficient 1. Then, move the constant term to the right side of the equation. Next, find half of the coefficient of x and square it. Remember, dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. Simplify negative 12 and 2 to negative 6, leaving us with negative 6 over 7. Negative 6 squared is 36 and 7 squared is 49. Then, add this value to both sides of the equation. Next, write this perfect square trinomial as a binomial square. This number is half of the coefficient of x in the perfect square trinomial. On the right side, add the fractions. To get a common denominator, multiply the first fraction by 7 over 7. Negative 8 times 7 is negative 56, and 7 times 7 is 49. Then, add the numerators, which equals negative 20. Now, when we take the square root of both sides, the value inside the square root is negative. In the real number system, we cannot take the square root of a negative number, right? Therefore, the answer to this problem is that there is no real solution. However, if you have already learned about imaginary numbers in class, this problem has two imaginary solutions. So please stay with me, we have a few more steps to do. We can rewrite negative 20 over 49 as negative 1 times 20 over 49, right? This is the same as the square root of 20 over 49 multiplied by the square root of negative 1. From the definition of imaginary numbers, the square root of negative 1 is denoted by i. So here, we replace the square root of negative 1 with i. 
the square root of 20 over 49 simplifies to 2 times the square root of 5 over 7. Now, solve for x by adding 6 over 7 to both sides of the equation. You can leave your solution as it is. Or you can also write to show the two solutions separately. I hope you understand now how to solve quadratic equations using the completing the square method. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.